today we will be discussing the biological macromolecules our objectives are the following first is to distinguish between carbohydrates proteins lipids and nucleic acids to summarize the general characteristics of each biomolecule and to relate the structures of biomolecules with their properties Before we begin, I would like to introduce you to the word monomer. Monomer is a building block molecule that can react with other molecules to form very large molecules o yung tinatawag natin na polymers. Madalas nating mababanggit ang salitang ito, itong monomer, dahil involved ito sa pag-aaral natin sa kabuuan ng mga tinatawag natin na biological macromolecules. Okay, ano nga ba itong tinatawag natin na biological macromolecules? Biological macromolecules are these large organic molecules that are significant for the survival and growth of living organisms. So we all know that our bodies are composed of cells. These cells provide structure for the body. Sila rin yung kumukuha ng nutrients sa mga food na kinakain natin. And most importantly, sila rin ang responsible sa pag-convert ng mga nutrients na ito into energy. Itong mga cells na ito, nangangailangan sila ng tinatawag natin na biological macromolecules para magampanan nila yung mga roles nila. Ito ang dahilan why we consume food, why we eat. Same reason sa iba pang living things sa mundo, animals, plants, they are also in need of these biological macromolecules. Meron tayong four major classes ng biological macromolecules. We have carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. So, iisa-isahin natin ang mga ito. Unahin natin si carbohydrates. Carbohydrate, or mas kilala natin sa tawag ng carbs, by definition, is the primary source of energy for the human body. It is made from carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Natutunaw ito sa water at insoluble naman ito sa mga non-polar solvents. If you can remember, nung elementary tayo, meron tayong go, grow, and glow food na tinatawag. Under that topic, na-introduce sa atin ang teacher natin noon ang carbohydrates. Carbohydrates ang kinukonsume natin para mag-gain ng energy. This is considered to be our main source of energy. Ang monomer ng carbohydrate or ang building block ng carbohydrate ay saccharide. Saccharide is an organic compound containing sugars. Ang basic example ng carbohydrates natin ay rice, bread, pastas, potatoes, and so on. Kinaklasify natin ang carbohydrates as either simple or complex. Under the simple sugars, we have monosaccharide and disaccharide. Polysaccharide naman para sa complex sugars. Monosaccharide is the simple form of carbohydrates. Hindi na tayo makakahanap ng mas simple pang klase ng sugar. Ito na talaga yon. Examples natin for monosaccharide are listed below. We have glucose. Kung mapapansin nyo sa mga examples natin, entirely for carbohydrates, they all end with OSE. Ibig sabihin, may contain sila na sugar molecules. So, balik tayo sa unang example natin sa monosaccharide, ang glucose. Glucose is used in dextrose, blood sugar, and it can be in the form utilized by the human body. Basically, ang glucose ang pinaka-abundant na monosaccharide. Next, we have galactose. Galactose can be found in milk and milk products. Usually, matatagpuan natin ito sa milk ng mga mammals. Pinoproduce ng mga mammals ang galactose. Next example is the fructose. It can be found in fruits and honey. Another type of simple sugar is the disaccharide. It is a carbohydrate containing two monosaccharide residues. Sa madaling salita, 
ang disaccharide ay combination lang ng ating mga monosaccharides. First example for the disaccharide, we have maltose. Maltose is a combination of glucose and glucose. Matatagpuan natin ito sa malt. Ano po ma'am yung malt? Ito yung pinatuyong cereal grain. Yun lang yung malt, pinatuyong cereal grain. Another one is sucrose. This is a combination of glucose and fructose. Matatagpuan natin ito sa regular table sugar, sa sugar cane, and sa sugar beet. Yung sugar beet, plant yon wherein yung roots niya ay may mataas na concentration ng sucrose. Pinapatubo yun commercially para sa sugar production. Next example is lactose. Lactose is a combination of glucose and galactose. It can be found in milk and milk or dairy products. If you are familiar with this, meron tayong tinatawag na lactose intolerance. Nangyayari ito kapag hindi ma-digest ng body natin yung lactose sa iniinom natin na milk or pwede din sa kinokonsume natin na mga dairy products. So, ayun yung tinatawag natin na lactose intolerance. Another classification of carbohydrates is complex sugar. Under complex sugar, meron tayong tinatawag na polysaccharide. Polysaccharide consists of a number of sugar molecules bonded together. Basically, ito lang ay madaming monosaccharides combined together. Para sa example natin sa polysaccharide, first we have starch. Amylose and amylopectin. Starch is the main energy storage material in plants. Parehong matatagpuan sa starch granules ang amylose at amylopectin. Ang pinagkaiba lang nila, yung amylose is straight chain polysaccharide, yung walang branches. Yung amylopectin naman, branch chain polysaccharides ito na merong 20 subunits. So, ang pinagkaiba nila ay structures. Next is glycogen. It is the main energy storage materials in animals. Makikita natin ito sa liver and muscles. Another example is the cellulose. Ang cellulose ay major component ng cell walls sa ating mga plants. Of course, wood fiber cannot be digested by humans. Ayan, composed din ng uh, cellulose ang ating mga wood fibers. Lipids, also known as fats, is one of the four classes of biological macromolecules. By definition, it is the long-term energy storage for the human body. It also provides insulation that is beneficial because it helps keeping us humans and other living things warm, especially kapag malamig ang panahon. It is made from carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Natutunaw ito sa oil and insoluble naman ito sa water. Lipids are important nutrients in our body but keep in mind that consuming too much of it can cause harm for us, specifically heart disease, cancer, and obesity. So, ingat-ingat sa pagtake ng fats. Ang monomer ng lipids ay fatty acid and ang basic example natin for this is fats and oils. Meron din tayong different classifications of lipids. First is the triglyceride. Ito yung pinaka-common na type ng lipids. Here we have what we call solid triglyceride aka fats. So usually galing ito sa mga animals. Examples for solid triglyceride or fats ay meat, milk, butter, margarine, eggs, and cheese. There is also a liquid triglyceride aka oil. So galing naman ito sa mga plants. Basic examples ng liquid triglyceride or oil natin ay olive oil, corn oil, sunflower oil, and soybean oil. Another classification of lipid is the phospholipid, which is the main component of the cell membrane. Involved ito sa structure ng ating cells. Also, 
we have wax, matatagpuan natin ito naturally sa mga halaman. It prevents the plant from losing excessive amounts of water. Next is the steroid. Main component ito in the formation of cholesterol and sex hormones. And also sa production ng birth control pills natin. Another biological macromolecule is the proteins. Proteins are macronutrient that is essential to building muscle mass. It is made from carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Ang monomer ng ating proteins ay amino acids. Common scenario involving protein ay sa mga tao na nagpapalaki ng katawan. Aside from exercise, big part ng diet nila ang protein. It can be protein shake, juice, or even raw source of proteins like egg. So, tinitake nila ng uh, hilaw yung egg kinakain nila ng mga tao na nagpapalaki ng katawan. We have further examples for protein. Keratin is a structural protein found in hair, skin, nails. So, pag sinabing structural, ang ibig sabihin, it is related in the formation or building of hair, skin, and nails. Fibroin or silk protein is one of the strongest natural fibers that have high resistance to deformation. So, silk has a smooth and soft texture. Basically, ito ay natural protein fiber na commonly ay hinahabi para makagawa ng textiles. Then, in silk, fibroin can be found. Collagen is major insoluble fibrous protein found in connective tissues such as tendons, ligaments, skin, cartilage, and icornia. Today, wildly used ito sa skin care dahil ine-enhance nito ang elasticity ng ating mga balat. Enzymes function to catalyze chemical reaction. Pinapabilis ng enzymes ang digestion ng food sa ating katawan and other chemical reactions. Under enzymes, we have lipase. Lipase, ito yung nagdadigest ng fats. Pepsin, ito yung nag-turn ng proteins into smaller units which we call peptides. And sucrase or invertase, ito yung nagdadigest naman ng sugar and starch sa ating katawan. Myoglobin is also an example of protein. It contains iron where the oxygen is stored. There are two classes of proteins. The saturated fats, commonly known as the unhealthy fats. Basic example nito ay butter. On the other hand, we have the unsaturated fats that is commonly known as the healthy fats. It includes oils mostly extracted from plants. Next stop is the nucleic acid also known as polynucleotide. It plays an essential role in the storage, transfer, and expression of genetic information such as DNA and RNA. Na-discover ito ni Friedrich Mischer in 1868. It is made from carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. Ang mong number or building block ng nucleic acid natin ay nucleotide. Ang examples natin for nucleic acids are the following. First, we have deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA. It is a nucleic acid that carries the genetic code of organisms. It is fondly termed as the blueprint of life. So, bawat creature sa mundo ay may kanya-kanyang DNA. Next, we have ribonucleic acid or RNA. It is a nucleic acid that carries the information from DNA to the cellular factories for the synthesis of proteins. We have three parts of nucleotide, namely nitrogenous base, 5-carbon carbohydrate or simply sugar, and phosphate group. 
Yung mga nabanggit ko, ito yung mga compounds na makikita natin sa building block ng nucleic acids natin, which is yung nucleotide. Ayan, makikita natin sa kanan yung illustration ng mga parts. Nandyan yung phosphate group. Ayan, sa gitna yung pentose sugar or ibig sabihin yung pentose ay 5 carbon carbohydrate, kaya pentose. And then, yung green naman, yung nitrogenous base, or also known as adenine. So, we can now distinguish yung difference ng mga biological macromolecules natin. Nakarakterize na din natin sila individually. And napag-usapan din natin yung functions and structures nila. That is it for our module 7. See you on the next one.